Hey everybody, this is Mrs. Garden, and I wanted to post a video about a couple different things that I do with my herbs, okay? So there are a lot of teas that I make, and any of you who have followed me um, all this time know that I'm a big fan of teas. And so often what I'll do is I will use either the little tea ball, or I'll use these. These are my favorite. And I will steep whatever herbs I have and make great teas. It's my preferred uh, way of using my medicinal herbs, okay? However, sometimes we need a little bit extra stuff. And so what I have here is I have some of my herbs, especially the herbs that I use in this tea right here, okay? Uh, this is my immune blend tea minus the echinacea because for me, sometimes having too much uh, especially between the echinacea and the elderberries, can put my immune system into overdrive, okay? So I'm very careful. Sometimes I'll add a little tiny bit if I really feel I need it, and other times I won't. I have my dandelion leaf, which I still have not put into a container yet, and I have my elderberries. I have my mullein, which is right here, and I actually put some peppermint. Peppermint's got a lot of great uh, properties to it. It's also immune building, but it's also very soothing. I like the taste of peppermint. You do not have to use peppermint. I know some of you had mentioned before that you just can't do peppermint, and I totally understand that. Um, when I get peppermint, though, from my garden or the farm that I get my herbs from, it's really nice, earthy, minty flavor, so I don't feel like that peppermint is too much, but that's just me, you know, it's no big deal. So what I wanted to do is, you already see my tea. I use this usually if I'm starting to feel sick or if I've been around people who are sick, um, and I give it to my family. But there are other things you can do with herbs. Um, and some of these herbs I use, so this is a tincture. Now, I didn't make these tinctures. Tinctures, maybe I'm lazy. I don't think I'm lazy, but tinctures require a lot of herbs, okay? A significant amount of herbs. And they take uh, a long time to make. Remember last week I made the fire cider, right? Well, the fire cider takes four to six weeks for it to really become what you need it to become in order for it to be uh, this amazing powerhouse of immunity, right? So the same thing goes for tinctures. Now you can make tinctures with alcohol and you can make tinctures with um, glycerin and filtered water. I prefer alcohol almost every time, but, but I'm not against glycerin. So this is a great example. This is from Earthly, which you all know um, I, I love. I love their tinctures. This is their Feel Better Fast. So this is part of my protocol when I'm not feeling well um, or if I'm already sick or, again, I, I don't use this before I start to develop symptoms, but I do use it once I have the symptoms. And this is this particular one. You can see it has fennel seed, echinacea. Um, I can't read everything on here. <laughs> but I think astragalus root might be in here. Um, yeah, sorry, elderflower. So you can see this is a great example of where there's elderflower and echinacea. If I'm already sick and I'm taking this, I am definitely not combining the herbs in my tea, right? It's just not going to be all that great for me because then I wind up with this crazy symptoms that can manifest in my skin. I mean, things like my hair can fall out. Uh, I will develop horrible rashes because my immune system just goes into auto it's the autoimmune disease and it just kicks it into gear and it does crazy things to my body. I keep hoping that someday, maybe if this ever happens, I'll turn into like, I don't know, spider woman or super woman, maybe develop some really cool things from this autoimmune disorder. <laughs> but until that happens, I don't mix a lot of this stuff. So in this case, I will only keep to my elderberry tea and I will take this as well. Now this one is a glycerin and, and distilled water base and it's great, it's tasty, it doesn't interfere. I add all of my tinctures to water and I drink them all at once. Some people stick them under their tongue, it's fine, you could do it either way. Some tinctures I know are out there that are very specific to under the tongue and if you get a tincture that says that, they'll make sure you know. Now this one is my anti-inflammatory and I take this pretty much every day because of my autoimmune disorder. Now this one has ginger and cinnamon and orange peel 
It has echinacea. Um, and this is also a glycerin based one. Now the elderberry elixir that I have is an alcohol based um, elixir. And so when I make my own, I make them with alcohol. I typically use vodka, you can use bourbon. Um, people use a couple different things, but I, I prefer vodka and I, I don't know, I usually have Tito's in the house, so that's what I use. Um, but it can take a really long time because you really want these herbs to, you want all of the goodies and nutrients sucked out of the herbs and the glycerin does that and alcohol does it even better. Okay. So you could make these if you wanted to with alcohol. Um, and like I said, Earthly does. I have a couple tinctures that I have made, but they do take a really long time and you need a profound amount of herbs, especially if you're doing a single herb tincture. Um, like I did make a single herb lemon balm tincture and it's just, you need so much. Thank God I have a lot of lemon balm, but um, and my house isn't big enough for the amount of herbs I'd need to make all the tinctures that I do really like to take. So, you know, that being said, tinctures are another way to heal yourself with herbal medicine, okay? And Earthly is a great example. Earthly is not the only company that does it, but I just really like it. And I like it enough where I'm an affiliate. That's how much I believe in it. So another thing you can do, which I don't have with me, there's a couple things. So, oh, you'll see this is going to be for what we're going to do today, which is for an infusion, which is a little different than a tincture. Okay. Um, this is, I love this. So my mortar, mortar, ugh, mortar and pestle, I use this to grind my herbs into basically fine dust, right? And you'll see pharmacists have used them since the beginning of pharmacology. Herbal medicine really is the mother of modern medicine. And um, so people use these to grind, like I said, grind the herbs down. And so what I do with this is I make poultices with it and there's also something you can make called an electuary and an electuary is amazing and you make it with honey right so here's my local honey um i'm on a manuka honey kick because of my skin disorder that i have that i'm finally conquering and um, that's been really helpful but you can use just your regular local honey you know organic is better raw is better and basically you create this tasty medicine right with your herbs so you could take um echinacea for example or even all of this you can take a couple of tablespoons of this 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 tea blend which has your mullein it has your elderberry it has your dandelion you can add some echinacea, you can grind it into a fine dust, you can add your honey, and there you have this amazing thing. And you can make it in, in a big amount, so you can kind of use, you know, massive amounts. I make smaller amounts, and I take it as I need it. And I will do a presentation on this another time, but I wanted to show you different things you can do with herbs uh, that I like to do with herbs in order to maximize their benefit for you. This is really good for children, um, because it can be really tasty for them to take some medicine and they don't like to drink tea, it's really hot, they don't like the taste of the, um, the tinctures. So this is a really great alternative, which like I said, I will do as a presentation another time. But today, I really wanna tell you, see I have another of my quart glasses, right? My ball jar, and I have my herbs, okay? So these are the herbs that I use, like I said, in this, plus some peppermint, plus some echinacea. Now, what I'm actually going to do today is show you how to make an infusion. Now, what is an infusion? Mind the camera. <laughs> Thank you. So an infusion is something that you would use. I have boiling water, four cups of it right here, okay? I like to use equal measure, okay? So I'm gonna get a quarter cup, of elderberries. So here's my quarter cup of elderberries. And I'm going to throw it in here. Whoops. There we go. And then I'm going to get my quarter cup of mullein. Now, as you know, mullein is really good for respiratory illnesses. 
and um, you know, breathing problem. So you can smoke mullen. It's a really cool plant. I think everybody should have mullen. I'm also going to grab my dandelion, another super food. I love dandelion. I just saw one in my walk today. I was so excited. It's kind of a miserable day where I'm at. So I have my quarter cup of dandelion. Okay. And then I am going to add a quarter cup of peppermint. So if you want, you could tailor. So let's say I was dealing with um, a severe upper respiratory infection. Um, I would want to really lay on the mullen. So I might do a whole half a cup of the mullen, right, in that case, and a quarter cup of elderberry, a quarter cup of dandelion. So you can make this, but I just did this in a more traditional um, way. Okay, so what am I doing? I could just create this tea, right? I have my tea, it's ready to go. Well, yesterday I was with family, and so what happened was is one of the kids is on an antibiotic and still had visible symptoms, upper respiratory symptoms, you know, just generally sick. And I am the primary caretaker for my granddaughter, and so I really can't afford to get sick. Or if I get sick, I can't have symptoms like that. I don't wanna get her sick, and I, I'm getting older. I can't do what I used to do when I was, you know, 26. So instead, I'm going to make an infusion. The tea, I could do. No big deal. I can take a tincture. But with my infusion, I'm going to take this. I'm going to pour my water right into this. All right. And I'm going to kind of like, I should have gotten a spoon. So I'm just going to get this and get this all in there right sorry about the lack of spoon i'm gonna mix this up it's all good and as you can see i have these herbs right in this boiling water okay i just took it off of the stove okay and then i'm gonna add the rest of my water to this i'm gonna move it all the way and use all four cups so you can see this I'll put this here. The infusion, I'm gonna put my lid on it, okay? I'm gonna shake it up really good, all right? Okay? When you do, you wanna shake it up. You want those herbs to be fully submerged into your water, okay? So basically what I've created is a giant tea bag, okay? I have one cup total of the herbs that I wanted to use, and, and I added my four cups of boiling water into my quart bell, uh, ball jar, shaking it up really good, and I'm just going to keep it out. I'll keep it probably on my desk because it's a nice, cool, uh, dry place, and I'm going to keep it out overnight. And what's going to happen overnight is this is going to super steep. So you know when you get a tea bag, okay, so I would get my tea bag, and I would put you know, probably a teaspoon to a tablespoon of this. And I would steep it for 10, 20 minutes. And I'm gonna get a lot of benefits from all of this. And, and often what I'll do is I'll put a whole tablespoon in to my uh, tea bag here. And I will refill basically a, a mug that is twice this size, like a big glass jug I have. And I will reuse it all day. And I'll add extra herbs as needed, okay? And that's great, and I'm getting lots of benefits. But I was exposed to this sick little girl, and um, I'm gonna need the maximum benefits, right? So tonight, you know, and last night I came home, I took my tea, and I took some of my preventative tinctures. But tomorrow, I'm going to have this high impact medicinal tea, okay? And it is an infusion. You can do this with any herb. So if you wanted straight up mullen, you could make a really powerful infusion with a cup of mullen. You put it in your jar. You, you know, you, you put the boiling water in, keep it overnight, shake it up, and you can put it in the fridge. It's good for a few days and you just drink that. You, you strain, like tomorrow I'm going to strain out the herbs, throw them in a compost pile, and then 
drink this tea over the next couple days. And I'm going to maximize the benefits of all of these amazing medicinal herbs. I can add my Manuka honey to it. I can add my local honey to it, whatever you have if I need to sweeten it a bit. And you know, honey, especially, you know, your, your raw, unprocessed local honeys are the best thing you could use. Uh, but you use whatever it is you have, and that's awesome too. So yeah, here we have a really potent medicinal hyper tea. It's an infusion. Anyone can do it. You just grab your herbs. You can make an infusion with, I mean, I have my, my digestive tea that I make, right? With my ginger and peppermint. I could do the same thing if I wanted to. Uh, if I've been struggling for whatever reason, you know, people with GERD and people with acid reflux can do that. And it's really powerful and medicinal. It really helps them. Um, but this is going to give me that power kick that I need. I can drink it cold. I can heat it up on the uh, stove top. You know, whatever I want. So this, like I said, is an infusion, right? This is my tea bags, which I would use with my tea that I already have pre-blended. I will do another episode about poultices and um, electuaries at another time, but these are also really awesome. And I really hope you've enjoyed this. It's something I'm passionate about. Again, healing through herbs is my primary way of helping my family and myself get through a cold flu season, um, helped us get through COVID. You know, none of us really get sick all that often um, because as soon as we're exposed, I really jump on it and, you know, amp up everything that we need. And I always recommend that you do you. Uh, make sure you know your body. Make sure you know which herbs will work for you if you're on many any medications, please do your research. If you have a good doctor, an open-minded doctor, talk to them about it. A lot of doctors don't know anything about herbal medicine. And I don't necessarily blame them, but I struggle with doctors who are against it. Uh, so I really recommend you go to a naturopath or a homeopath. You do your own research, find good sources, um, and find out. It doesn't take much to type in echinacea and you know, whatever drug you may be taking, right? Uh, you know, like some things you can't take if you're on antidepressants, if, if you're already on, um, you know, uh, statins. You have to be really careful. Herbs aren't to be taken lightly. They are medicinal, and they do interact with modern pharm pharmaceuticals. So please be careful. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, ask them. Uh, feel free to DM me, reach out anytime. Um, if I don't know the answer, I will find it for you. I belong to a really rich community uh, of incredible herbalists who really know, I mean, more than I may ever know. Um, but these are my little ways of helping myself, my family, and the people I care about. And now I'm sharing that little bit with you. I hope you have a great day. And I can't wait to tell you about how this infusion comes out tomorrow. And uh, I will talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.